Well, Justin and Donal are standing by to tell us what it's like in Bordeaux the morning after, the night before. Uh, Donal, I suppose, you know, morning after, your reflections on that, you know, what are your big takeaways? I think from Andy Farrell's point of view, the, the, uh, all the key uh, targets were hit. Uh, 75 or 74 points, points differential, 12 tries scored. Uh, but for me, the biggest take was the physical conditioning of the players. Um, Ty Byrne, that try he scored right at the dead. He ran 70 mm. metres to uh, support Mac Hansen. Johnny Sexton, 38 years of age, playing 65 minutes and playing outstandingly well. Uh, I think he'll be thrilled with that. Yeah, the, the papers this morning have uh, Sexton as a record breaker while walking. That's a, li <laughs> that's a little unfair. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, from Johnny Sexton's point of view, at one stage he looked out on his feet and there was only about 10 minutes gone. I think walking was a little bit of um, a discredit to what he achieved, but uh, look, he'll be thrilled. In fact, typical Sexton, he looked annoyed to be called ashore at 65 minutes, so yeah. the omens are good. Yeah, he did. The growl is back. It certainly, it certainly seems to be back with a, a vengeance. Andy Farrell and his management team, they will be looking ahead to six days' time and, and Tonga. How do you think they'll go about changing things up? Uh, well, they will make changes. I think they'll be very keen to get, um, you know, fellas like Dan Sheehan, Dave Kilcoyne and Jack Conan, who haven't played for a good while now, to get them out there, either off the bench or starting. I think they have a plan coming into this World Cup anyway as to the two teams that were going to play in the opening matches. Um, the fact that they stood up so well in the searing heat that was there yesterday, uh, I think augurs well. Um, but Tonga will be a different animal in terms of they weren't involved in the first round. They've been sitting back waiting for their opportunity. They've already said they're going to go fully locked and loaded. And with some of the um, ex-New Zealand and Australian mm. players that they've got into their squad, they're going to be a handful. Yeah, I suppose very encouraging from yesterday as well. No injuries that we know of, uh, f from the, f for the moment. So I think, as you say, that will leave the, the plan in place for those two games. I can't let you go without just talking a little bit about the organisation. We're now into day three of the World Cup. There have been real problems and, and major problems here yesterday, I believe. Yeah, a lot of problems. I heard it from loads of Irish supporters and they were encouraged to go out. The ground is about 40 minutes out of the city. There's a tram that goes out there, but there's only so many people fit in the tram and they were, uh, they were like cattle in, 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 a, in, in a track and uh, um, a lot of people who left two hours before the match. They missed the opening 20 minutes. There was problem accessing water in the stadium, which again was a major problem. So a lot of teething issues. Uh, to be fair, they've been quite good on the ground, but uh, I don't think uh, they should have been aware mm -hmm. of the massive crowds that are coming here. So um, there's a bit of work to do on that front. Yeah, it certainly is. I think things they will be looking to sort out uh, by weekend too. Uh, Donald, for the moment, thanks for your reflections. Uh, we'll leave it there. Cheers. Thanks, lads. Well, with me this morning in studio are Hannah, Simon and Stephen. And look, Hannah, Donald talked there about his big positives being the physicality of this Irish team. What were the big positives for you? Um, I suppose just getting players minutes under their belt. And, and as they mentioned, um, no injuries there. You know, this World Cup and how Ireland fair are going to depend on, on what and who we have available to us. And as long as we keep going with no injuries, we'll be very happy. It's hard not to be smiling this morning. 12 tries, you know, a record World Cup win good start for Ireland. Yeah, it was a fantastic uh, start. We, we saw some big performances, obviously, from Peter Omani, Bundiaki, and for me personally, it was great to see Johnny back in action, and it didn't look like he missed a beat. He was fantastic. He was organising really well, scored a couple of tries, and, and topped off a really good team performance, so it was a good start. Yeah, look, it's very hard to judge it when you're playing against a, a team of that calibre too, but I think importantly for Ireland, as Hannah says, to get minutes under the belt, to get a lot of teams playing, and start off really cohesively as a squad as well. Yeah, it, it was good to watch at times. Yes, there were a few errors, but it was a greasy ball, hot and sweaty afternoon, but... I think there's a lot more to come, a lot more up the sleeves uh, of the Irish players, especially when it comes to their mall. We didn't really see much of their mall yesterday. That's going to have to be a weapon when it comes up against South Africa. So, yeah, it's a great head out. And most important thing is a clean bill of health and they can move into the Tonga week. The question is, what do you do with him against Tonga? Because no doubt about it, Sexton yesterday said, I want to play. But there's Jack Crowley and Ross Byrne who really want to get minutes as well next week. So what do you do? Yeah, I'd probably, I'd, I'd look to certainly get him some minutes. I'm not sure whether you start him or not, um, but he, he needs a bit more game time leading into those two big fixtures at the end of the pool. Um, I'm sure the competitor that Johnny is, I'm sure he'll want to start off the game. and it's, it's different starting as opposed to come off the bench, so I'd imagine he'll want to start and 
maybe a 50 minute, 45 minute performance and, uh, and get out of there and lead into South Africa then. There is a balance for Andy Farrell, Stephen, though, in terms of getting minutes into everybody and having a squad that are happy because you've been in this environment. Everybody wants there. to play. Yeah, I was there 2007, <laughs> the Bordeaux Four, as it was called. <laughs> Big Alan Quinlan, myself, Brian Young, and of course, uh, the crazy man, uh, Brian Carney, who played for Munster, yes. you know. So Monster. we did not feel part of that World Cup. We were handed our World Cup cap and I can remember bringing it home and going, well, I didn't even play a part in the Rugby mm -hmm. World Cup, even though we're training every day and probably doing more fitness than I've ever done in my life. And it was really disappointing. Uh, and I, I said this before, we actually came home heroes because we didn't play in the World Cup um, <laughs> for, for Ireland. But it was, it was really disappointing. And I think, you know, when Eddie O'Sullivan was picking a squad, he was honest with us. He was like, look, I've made a call here. I'm going to have to go with the same guys. They haven't delivered this time round. Unless there's an injury, you're not going to be involved. But I think it's really important that... This opportunity against Tonga, you know, if he goes with the same team again, he's going to have to go stronger for South Africa. And if that doesn't go to plan, then you have to go full bore again against Scotland. So the likes of Craig Casey, Porter will probably start again. We're going to see Shane involved. Jack Conan's got to get minutes. Jimmy O'Brien mm. has to get onto the pitch. So it's just looking at the combinations that we've seen over the last three or four weeks with the warm-up games and what's going to work for Andy Farrell. But it's really important that all these guys get some game time. Well, if you think back then, Hannah, even it's less players in a squad back then as well. You've got yeah, 33 sure. players. Trying to get 33 players over two games, that's, it, it's, it's very, very difficult. Absolutely, and I, I certainly wouldn't want to be in Farrell's shoes when he's you know, picking his teams, but I, I think Stephen's right. It's all about squad morale, having been involved uh, in, a, in a home World Cup in 2017. We had a number of girls who were obviously upset that they weren't involved in match day 23s, and everybody's there and is, is chomping at the bit and, and wants to play, but... Um, Farrell has to make sure that he keeps everybody happy but make sure he gets the results at the end of the day. Well, let's not forget either, this is Tonga's first game, so they mm -hmm. are going to be absolutely out of the traps and wanting to play. There's a difficulty if Ireland don't go full bore, they could get caught cold here. Could definitely get caught cold. Uh, Tonga are a serious outfit. You just look at their, their team, some of the star power that they have, um, they can match it with anyone or mix and match with anybody. Um, just like we saw previously a couple of weeks ago with the Ireland Samoa game, just they can make things very sticky for you and if the conditions aren't perfect for us uh, it can be a tougher game than you'd imagine so there's boys who do need a run you need you need to give people like Jack Crowley and Craig Casey as Stephen was saying but um, I think first and foremost get the win it's going to be a huge physical ask. One of the problems that we've seen when Ireland do try to mix and match is particularly if you take the most recent example in Samoa if Ireland don't have their full 15 on the pitch or their starting 15 if you want to call that their best 15 they have struggled at times. They yeah, struggled at times but you wouldn't say that they're going to struggle against Tonga or they shouldn't struggle yeah. against Tonga and I think What's the weakness of a, a Tongan or you know, Pacific Island teams is usually their set piece. So I think you might see Ian Henderson, the Ireland's biggest second row in there, going to their mall, scrummaging a bit more, actually slowing the tempo down a little bit, kicking to the corner a bit more, um, game management. So, yeah, and then obviously the last 20 minutes, if they're 20 points up, it's a different story. They can get the continuity going again and, and keep adding to that. But it's going to be a physical game. And, and again, what... What's the end goal out of it? It's, again, another clean bill of health and no injuries and a, you know, a two-point win, I would take, as long as the squad's yeah. healthy. <laughs> Look, yeah. that's absolutely all fair enough. What about the other games yesterday then, Hannah? Because the other side of the draw does look like it's starting to take a bit of shape. Australia and England, both with impressive victories yesterday, you'd have to say. Yeah, look, um, England in particular obviously put themselves in a very difficult position uh, going down early on to the red card, but... Luckily enough for them, Argentina decided not to turn up in round one um, and they were kind of easily able to, to overturn um, those Argentinians. But they didn't look entirely convincing for me, um, you know, and they have a few tricky teams uh, in their pool. So it should be interesting to see how the next couple of rounds go for them. Yeah, look, we laughed about Eddie Jones and what he might do, but even just reading through his quotes where he's saying, look, at least I'm consistently hated, you know, he's, <laughs> he, he's buying into this and he seems to be quite enjoying the circus around it. He is. He's, he's wild. He, he does enjoy the media outings. Um, but, you know, these, these things can go two ways. They can galvanise the team, especially a young squad, and they can come together, have a fantastic World Cup and you know, go on way beyond where all of us probably think they'll end up, um, or it can go south pretty fast. So um, he's a smart man. He knows what he's doing. He's been to finals before. He's taken teams like Japan and beaten Springboks. So um, he knows what he's doing. But I just wonder with this squad, is this uh, too much for him? But, yeah. yeah.